Good morning to all of you. Whenever I think of the planet Earth, say 30 years down the line, frankly, I get shivers down my spine. Because whatever data we had regarding the different futures that lie ahead, you can see that just above the sapling that is right there in the slide. We have now attained 1.30 already. You are seeing that plus 1.5. Plus 1.3 we have already reached. That plus 1.3 is from pre-industrial levels. That pre-industrial level is 1850 to 1870. So from there, our plan was to contain to 1.5 till the end of this century, but come 2022, and we have already reached 1.3. So this is a very, very alarming situation. Come 1.5, and we are going to have a planet which will look entirely different from what Neil Armstrong saw when he landed on the moon. He saw a very blue planet with a white band all around. Now the planets our astronauts are seeing is something of this order. You, you can see there, the 1.5 degree centigrade will be greenish blue. And prior to that, we have already started raising that light green. Then plus two will be like sun. Plus two future will be like yellowish. And this plus three will be like red sun. So our planet, which Raji was talking about turning into like a sun, is going to be... Uh, very much on the anvil, say by 2070, and it's not far, if that is the way we continue working. The current policies and the current commitments that different countries have made, they have seen to it that the temperature will definitely reach plus three by the end of this century. So this is a very, very alarming situation. And that is why I thought I would bring forth this point before I start talking about what kind of planet we are going over, going to hand over to our posterity. The posterity we are going to hand over at plus three degrees centigrade, and that will be like this. So this is very, very challenging and very, very uh, serious matter and we need to address it by adopting some of the tools that are provided by digital transformation. But prior to that, I'll just like to take you through the scale of challenge that we have. See, pre-industrial age, you can see in the graph, the uh, emission levels were very much close to the 260 level. And as industrial revolution started, say during the period of 1850 onwards, you can see the graph going up. And now, come 2020, you can see the level touching 400. So, as all of you know, this greenhouse gas emissions cause rise in the surface temperature of the globe. The temperature, which was 13.69 degrees centigrade in the 18th century, has now reached 14.96 degrees centigrade. That, that was in 2022. So that was 1.27 degree rise. And now, as I told you, it is touching 1.3. So how this global greenhouse gas emissions are scattered across the sectors. 
you can see energy is almost three fourth and this energy is mostly dependent on fossil fuels as all of us know fossil fuels generate a lot of greenhouse gases and thickening of greenhouse gas layer at our stratosphere causes the temperature rise to an alarming proportion now you see this uh, energy unless and until we go for renewable energy we cannot do much about it that is why the focus has now entirely shifted on saying goodbye to fossil fuel and say hello to renewable energy now you know in paris this issue was discussed at length and since all countries did not seem to be in agreement with the kind of steps and measures that needed to be taken for mitigating these climate issues a uh, agreement was uh, uh made between uh, i would say 195 countries signed to that agreement and that agreement uh, became uh, mandatory for all the countries to follow that was legally binding and under that agreement all countries were supposed to make their plans to see to it that the emission level that was there in 2015 gets halved by 2030 further gets halved by 2040 and then by 2050 we come to zero neutral position based on those uh, commitments government of india also drew up a plan and that plan was under climate change commission and national missions were created and the missions as you can see in the slide solar mission enhance energy efficiency mission sustainable habitat mission water mission sustaining himalayan ecosystem mission green india mission sustainable agriculture mission and a strategic knowledge for climate change mission the topmost on the government agenda remained solar and government of india is committed to be the leader in generation of solar energy because as you saw in the previous slide solar solar happens to be the uh, uh energy happens to be one area where we need to focus on strategy for reducing carbon footprint when it came to industries remained focused on this five pronged strategy one was of course this reduce reuse recycle then water conservation then renewable energy and then tree plantation but digital transformation was all pervasive because even those four pillars could be covered through digital transformation digital transformation was all about collection of data and this data collection involved collection of data either through plcs or dcs or through iot devices sensors and for this again lot of initiatives were taken across the industry and industries came up with data lakes that people were able to access from anywhere at any time as it were all of these were web based applications now uh, these uh, enablers these data when they came into being and people could access it all the stakeholders could access it uh, it was able to give you insights over the various processes and process optimization plus all the wastes limitations could be done uh, raw material quality could be uh, improved upon downtime was reduced energy efficiency was achieved and yield was improved 
just by means of digital dashboards and data visualization this was possible when cloud analytics plus data uh, data vision computer vision and all these things were taken together we decided to come up with a business that has to be digitally lean digital lean business mean, meant all the processes that were not required many in many of the processes it was found that some of the processes could be ignored and some could be curtailed upon so once data democratization part was over this business to be digital lean thing was taken care of through cloud analytics and making mathematical models predictive models that were artificial intelligence based machine learning based uh, models that were able to take care of life cycle assessment and this could only be made possible through digital culture organization uh, otherwise it would not have been possible so organization digital culture was ensured and technology was optimally upgraded so this strategy which industries adopted was named dbot and uh, this yielded good results and at the bottom of it lay the thinking that while the whole broad idea was to be a uh, reduction in the wastages the bottom line had to be improved upon ebita had to be improved and think big start small and learn fast this was also akin to fail fast and derive upon better solutions having said that some of the technologies that are extensively used in digital transformation are this ar vr mr as i already told artificial intelligence like python r then uh, machine learning it was also exclusively used and then 3d printing has been adopted so all these tools taken together meant that our business could be made sustainable and digital transformation is one tool through which we can go for sustainable business now we are also alive to the fact that this uh, digital transformation also requires energy again as i talked earlier energy has to be other than fossil fuel based if this sustainability through digital transformation is to be achieved other point is that all the iot devices semiconductor devices are all going to be uh made of different elements like germanium silicon and so many other elements that are available not in abundance on this earth so that is also one area which we need to focus on and we need to have some alternate over that then uh, another point is that humongous data is being generated through these iot sensors and all these data are routed routed through servers the servers also need to be powered again energy and this handling of humongous data is also not very very easy so again this uh, sustainability business is uh, somehow dependent on how we utilize our e waste uh generation e waste generation is also one area which is going to be a huge challenge in the sustainability drive another point before i end is robots robot is something which is basically challenging the whole of the human uh, i would say race because now turing test is almost 
unable to identify who is the robot and who is the human being. There is hardly any difference between cognitive ability as well as physical ability of human beings and robots. So digital transformation is another challenge in the sense that robots are going to challenge us all and we need to be very, very alert and alive to the fact that we introduce these digital transformation drives with utmost caution and uh, necessary regulations. Thank you very much.